Good morning everyone, uh, let us continue with our discussion in solid rocket motors and the instability associated with that. Uh, so, I have uh, written down, I have written down two references, one is F S Blomkshield, he is a, a person with a lot of experience in solid rocket motor instability, <coughs> article uh, is titled lessons learned in solid rocket combustion instability, it is in the proceedings of 2006 AAA missile census conference, uh, Monterey, California. And <coughs> Uh, this article is there in the internet, so if you just search for Bloom Shield and type one of these words, uh, you should be able to get it. And it is a very nice article, easy to read and most of the things that I am saying is from that. Uh, it does not give any uh, great mathematical uh, way to calculate these things, it just gives overview and uh, uh, rules of thumb and so on, but it is uh, excellent references, lot of wisdom is distilled into it and he has also given about uh, 75 plus references which will have all the details. Uh, <coughs> the uh, second reference which will indeed give all the maths is from Professor Kulik, Fred Kulik <coughs> titled unsteady motions in combustion chambers for propulsion systems, uh, NATO research and technology organization RTO AG AVT 039. So, this 39 is the report number and if you type Kulik and uh, any of these keywords or if you go to this website, you can get this article, get this book free. It is a full book written properly, not just a um, cut and paste. It is a full book, proper textbook, but it is available uh, in the internet. So, you can download that and read it. And Kulik is the person who kind of laid the foundation of research on uh, the framework for analyzing solid rocket instability. He worked, I do not know, from 1960s to even now he is doing the same thing. So, there is a lot of wisdom distilled in the book and uh, you, you should read it and uh, he gives the normal mode analysis, he gives, he derives in great detail how to get the uh, alphas from the response functions and, and, and so on. Of course, he says the modes are normal, that is where I have disagreement, uh, but otherwise it is a wonderful book and he has written um, very good results about everything. So, I both are freely available, readily available, so please take a look at them at least. <coughs> Now, uh, I wish to speak uh, about little bit more about the driving mechanism, in particular the pressure coupled response. So, the way it is defined <coughs> uh, is it is defined as the uh, perturb burning rate over the mean, burning, mean, mean burn rate, uh, that is the way it is, because how much uh, uh, the uh, perturbation in uh, burn rate over the mean burn rate how is that dependent on the perturbation pressure over the mean pressure rate. So, it is the ratio between these two. So, the pressure coupled response is the amplification of the uh, or the coupling between the combustion process and the uh, pro, uh, uh, combustion process at the propellant surface and the acoustic pressure. So, uh, th this is the most important parameter in combustion instability in solid rocket. So, R p c <coughs> equal to r hat over r bar divided by p hat over p bar. So, R hat is the amplitude of the burn rate oscillation, R is the mean burn rate, P hat is the uh, fluctuating pressure or the acoustic oscillation, pressure oscillations and P bar is the uh, mean pressure. So, uh, this is a function of of course, burn rate, mean pressure, frequency and uh, other propellant properties. So, it is not like a constant thing, it is a, um, a function of uh, mean pressure, mean burn rate, frequency what are the additives in the propellant, what are the catalysts involved and so on. Uh, you can show that if you have a propellant burn rate of the form of R equal to A p power n, which I think you all know, uh, then uh, you would, you can show that at 0 frequency or the quasi steady response, this would be same as the n and uh, it is a strong function of frequency. So, R p versus p would actually go like this. So, typically you have n less than 1. So, 1, 2, but then uh, this is at some frequencies it will go up and then uh, come down again and uh, you have to determine this for various parameters with experiments and uh, there are people trying to calculate it, but it is not that simple and it is not like a proven calculation and I think we are still not there to calculate this properly, but we have to do experiments. And uh, uh, like I said, this is the uh, most important 
parameter and once again um, if you think in terms of r equal to a p power n the uh, n gives the response only for omega is 0, but after that it just de it depends very much on how the flame responds to the acoustic uh, oscillations and uh, that need not be in a quasi steady manner at all flame can act like a filter and it may respond differently at, at, at different frequencies and, and so on. So, we cannot uh, purely think quasi steady it we should not think quasi steady at all. Now, there are many reasons for obtaining the pressure coupled response of a propellant because primarily it can be used to compare propellants destined for the same application. So, at a given frequency if you have propellants with different RPC uh, response function uh, the one which will be uh, having lower response will be less likely to drive instability than one with a higher propellant response. Uh, now uh, that is one thing so straight away it gives like an idea of how much is the acoustic driving in general all propellants drive it is very unlikely that uh, propellants will damp and uh, we can use this we should use this in this calculation of alpha alpha from the pro pressure coupled response can be obtained from this and that is uh, uh, that, that is what is the driving mechanism primary driving mechanism and uh, the issue is whether that can be balanced by our losses. Now, this uh, to get a detailed idea of the uh, this stability calculation I suggest you read this uh, book it is given very clearly and elaborately starting from 3D then it derives the 1D version and uh, in some sense it is a very uh, more complicated version of what we did for a Riccati tube or something like that. There our heat release function was like a delta function sitting at one place whereas here the uh, combustion is distributed. So, it is there everywhere uh, you are you are having combustion everywhere. So, you are having driving everywhere, but apart from that it is uh, very very similar analysis and I am sure you can follow it, but it is just involved, but it is very interesting and very nice it will just take some time to do it I am not doing it in class because it will take a long time to do, uh, but the basic principle is what we did in the analysis of Riquet tau tube or that um, uh, n tau model with McManus and, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so, I, I think you, you have enough competence and background to uh, follow this analysis in given by Kulik and uh, of course, this analysis originally appeared in the 1970s in uh, various journal articles he has summarized everything into this book. So, the original papers you can uh, read and that will give you of course, some historical insight into how things were done and the way things were uh, going on. Now, <coughs> we should measure the propellant response as I mentioned because that is what is the input to the stability program uh, in toward towards calculating alpha and there is no way you can simply guess what is the propellant response and it is a function of various parameters. So, it is really a non uh, trivial task. So, there is uh, some way there are many ways to uh, measure the propellant response I will tell you the most uh, uh, popular way which is called uh, using a T burner. So, you can use T burner for measuring the pressure coupled response and the device is called T burner because it looks like a T that is all there is no uh, special thing about it. So, you have a tube and you keep propellant at both ends Now, this has a problem because as you start burning the pressure will keep on going up. So, what you do is to have some exhaust uh, and the exhaust products go to a surge tank. So, that the pressure does not change the mean pressure does not change dramatically during the experiment because the mean we want the mean pressure to stay fairly constant during the experiment. So, that we can measure the uh, propellant response at some particular mean pressure. So, we will have to put mount some uh, pressure transducer and 
and this would be the propellant sample and you mount them symmetrically on both sides this is also a propellant sample and sometimes you have provision to drive oscillations externally and they would also have phototransistors to check if the combustion is over uh, but those are just details so <coughs> you put two disc of propellant and typically this pipe is about uh, uh, one and a half inch diameter that is what is used in practice uh, probably that is a good size from experience I am sure they must have uh, tried one inch and two inch and three inch and found that this is the best but uh, typically if you see <coughs> literature in the uh, open literature it seems like one and a half inch is the uh, most common size and you have them mounted on both sides and <coughs> you ignite them simultaneously and you mount pressure transducers near the end the reason for mounting pressure transducer near the end is because uh, pressure is maximum there whichever mode it is so <coughs> and you, you pressurize it to begin with so that we can get the right mean pressure so What will shift? Uh, the end. Yeah. So if we are burning the surface, yeah. it will recede and it, it will not be a pressure maximum after some time. Why? It will be only uh, receding slightly. So, I mean, a propellant is like a half inch or quarter inch thick sample. So, it will recede slightly compared to the length, which is like uh, 1 meter or, or, or uh, 60 centimeter or 1.5 meter. The length is determined by the frequency that you want to excite, the natural mode and uh, so compared to that a few mm burning will not change frequency a lot so what uh, you do is if you look at the time trace in such a so the oscillations will grow initially and reach some kind of limit cycle kind of thing and then eventually fall off So this will be pressure versus time and let us say we can record it and uh, these experiments were done in the 1950s I think the first one was reported in 1958 or somewhere around that so in those days there was no A to D cards and all that but still they were doing it with uh, uh, oscilloscope and you would have this uh, uh, the storage oscilloscope and then you take a photograph of the oscilloscope with a polaroid camera or something like that, that was the uh, uh, fancy technology then then came the tape recorders I do not know if you have seen the spool type tape recorder so you could use that and then later on uh, analyze that slowly and so on. Uh, but in any case you find the so this is the growth with the propellant burning but in reality you can imagine that you are having the uh, propellant driving as well as the gases damping I mean the volume is damping uh, so there is damping in the system is always present so what you are seeing is driving minus damping but we want the driving so how do you do that we have to measure the damping and what is the best way to measure damping eventually this um, half inch or quarter inch propellant is going to finish burning so when that finishes burning these oscillations will die down so the rate at which it will die down the decay rate will give the damping so you have just have to subtract um, uh, so this is the damping rate this is driving minus damping you just add this rate to that rate and you will get the total driving from the propellant and from that you can so this is the crux of the matter there is no more complexities from that you can actually determine the uh, uh, pressure coupled response in, in this form so that is the crux of the matter that is you have growth but when it grows there is not only propellant driving so let us say there is a certain alpha 1 quantity of driving minus alpha 2 which is the losses but you have to measure the alpha 2 and then what you are measuring is alpha 1 minus alpha 2 suppose you know alpha 2 that can be added to alpha 1 minus alpha 2 plus alpha 2 which will give alpha 1 and the way you fi find the alpha 2 the, uh, the decay is by looking at uh, once the combustion is complete you look at the slope of this curve and from that you can get the uh, decay rate so I hope this is clear uh, there is a slightly different version of this called pulse T burner in which there is a possibility to get the oscillation kick because sometimes the propellant driving may not be enough so that it may not start on its own but this is the basic principle I do not want to go any further into it if anybody is interested I have a PhD thesis on it I can give it to you and uh, this uh, paper by Bloom Shell gives uh, nice references about uh, T burners which you can actually get from the web.
you may have to correct it, uh, they may not be the same, you are talking about a very important point, because once the burning gets completed, uh, the temperature might change. So, your natural frequency will change, but you will have to do this at various lengths and then determine this alpha 1 minus alpha 2 at various lengths and alpha 2 at uh, alpha 1 minus alpha 2 for various frequencies and then alpha 2 for various frequencies. And the alpha 2 corresponding to this experiment may have to be determined from some other experiments because the temperature changes. So, that will have, there have to be some correction to it, so uh, I mean strictly speaking, but uh, it may not vary so much also with. Uh, uh, with temperature, but uh, yes, this is an important point. Any other question? Well, uh, see, uh, uh, in some sense, it, it is constant only when you are having a linear growth then it, it grows exponentially and so on, but then after that uh, it is, uh, so strictly speaking if you zoom in here, you would see some kind of exponential growth, but then it, you can see it is coming down. So, you will have to catch in this regime, so uh, is it constant growth, uh, perfectly valid question it is not, but you have to find the region where it is constant, I mean the growth is exponential that means the growth rate is constant and then do the uh, measurement in that. And, and and one more thing is, uh, there are very deep questions that you are raising because uh, your amplitude has to be small for the linear theory to be valid and so on. So, uh, that is when, uh, I mean when the non-linearities are small, that is when the growth rate is constant, but then when the amplitude is very small, you may not be able to get the growth rate very well. So, there is always a compromise and the same thing here. it has reached a limit cycle, but there uh, I mean we are not looking at the linear theory. So, growth rate is 0 does not mean there is no instability, it can mean that we have reached a limit cycle. Yeah. Any other question? Increasing the mean pressure will be there yeah, so we have to connect uh, beautiful, we have to connect this to a search tank, so that is why I said exhaust products enter a search tank and which has a very big volume compared to this volume, so that uh, it won't pressure won't change uh, change much. So if your uh, mom and dad are very rich, the expenses you make won't bother your financial status much. But if they don't have money, uh, if you spend something today, your financial status will uh, change dramatically. But if you are connected to deep pockets with your parents, then uh, pressure won't change or uh, the uh, money won't. Uh, the money level you have with you won't change, so this is the same thing. So you want to make search tank quite big, and there's some guidelines to that. So you see, make sure that the pressure doesn't change. By mean pressure won't change more than a few percentage. Uh, I think uh, very brilliant points, but all this has been thought about and incorporated. And uh, getting a T burner to work is uh, the device is very simple in principle, but it's actually quite an art and very difficult thing to do. That's what I would say. Some stories can be told off the camera later. <laughs> Any other point? I am really impressed with the questions. Okay, so, uh, I uh, was not planning on speaking about motor in instrumentation, but uh, since Vishnu raised this point a few times, I will uh, speak at last class as well as earlier. He is very interested in measurements. So I thought, okay, somebody is interested, we will do speak a little bit and I have some uh, idea of having seen instrumentation in real uh, uh, real rockets, but I cannot say where uh, due to this, I do not want to go to jail. <coughs> so, we have to instrument the uh, rocket correctly, because the, the test is very costly uh, doing the static test. Do you have any idea how much a test costs? Can you try to guess? Yeah, it is kind of what it is. I mean. When uh, PSLV that motor was tested, uh, I remember the price it was 40 crore, this was in uh, late 80s I think uh, that PS1. I do not know how much it cost for S200, but I would probably around 100 crore. So, it is so expensive uh, that this is test in India, I mean abroad it may be even more expensive. Yeah. Will you carry out the complete test like uh, for the complete burning time? 
yeah 120 seconds or whatever it takes. So you take the motor you have to make sure that the rocket does not fly off. So the thing has to be sufficiently strong to hold it otherwise you know you can expect uh, I mean the power associated with thrust is so much that. So they have uh, devices to hold that I, was, I mean it is there in star have you seen it? Oh you went there I thought. and in Trivandrum they have little one to test the sounding rockets. I have seen that live fire it is really impressive but uh, in char they have this massive thing. I think you have to stand uh, 7 kilometers away from it when the test is done in case this wall breaks. <laughs> So uh, and uh, uh, and they have um, they they directly measure the thrust for small rockets they can actually do it vertical and all that so that you can hold but here it's that to be too difficult so it's done horizontally. <coughs> uh, but of course I'm 100 crore will be for a big motor smaller motor may not be uh, it'll be uh, proportionately smaller but it is quite uh, uh, expensive either case so it's strongly uh, recommended that all development motors must be instrumented. Um, with all this transducers piezoelectric piezo resistive transducers to uh, observe combustion instability. Now you may say that uh, let instability come then I will measure it uh, but there is a counter argument uh, I think at least the way it is done in India I think in America they do I mean several lots of tests maybe 50 or 100 tests but here they do one or two but we rely more on analysis simply because we do not have that kind of money to be honest. So, you have to be more careful. So, I mean PS1 was tested that first one 125 ton rocket was tested two times and then when they upgraded it to 139 ton they tested it once. So, I mean which is really impressive but that means that everything has to be accounted for uh, so that you do not see. Now, you may say that then again you may say that uh, uh, okay there is in instability may not happen I am a uh, expert in designing and uh, I would I know how to make instability not come. But if you look at the history there are lots of cases where there was no instability in a rocket for several years and then all of a sudden out of the blue it came. So at least you know what was there uh, to begin with. So I think buying a transducer for I do not know 2 lakh rupees and put putting 2 or 3 or, or maybe less 1 lakh uh, that is much better than this spend, spend 100 crore and, uh, and then you forgot to put this transducer or you do not have it and then uh, and so on. And as I said uh, uh, you can if everything goes well nobody is going to blame but if things uh, go wrong then like Dhoni was saying that if India did not win all these questions as to why did I come number 4, why did Sri Shant ball and uh, that was there so it was so keen uh, he was so keen that we win. So it is the same thing if something works then you know you can the uh, chairman will give high five to the prime minister and all, all this uh, president and all that. But if things go wrong it is people like us who get the axe so we make sure that engineers make sure that everything is put in stories in my room. Uh, <coughs> so uh, we can always have uh, uh, I mean we prefer to have pressure data over strain gauge data because uh, you know strain gauge for is uh, generally for measuring mean pressure that is what they use uh, right Rajesh you have experience with strain gauge but sometimes it picks up oscillations also but low frequency it may pick up but uh, would not really pick up high frequency. And sometimes you, I mean, you, you have accelerometer data. Now, many times you end up looking at accelerometer data and strain gauge data because they did not put the piezoelectric or piezo resistive transducer, and then the instability came on, and then this is the only thing you have, so might as well look at it. So, then you end up looking this, but it will be really nice to have proper pressure, trans, uh, proper piezoelectric transducers or piezo resistive transducers put in the, uh, put in the thing. Uh, piezo resistive because uh, we saw DC shift can happen and mean pressure can elevate uh, quite a bit. And if you are talking about a small rocket or uh, like the uh, air to air missiles or something like that or, or uh, the small handheld uh, then the, the frequencies can be very high because the smaller the motor the frequencies will be high and if you have uh, so there you have to have high response high frequency uh, response transducers and you have to have good piezoelectric transducers. But if you are talking about uh, a 20 meter long motor longer than that then the frequencies will be very low. Uh, there will be typically like like the space shuttle oscillations 15 hertz or something and, and the Arian I think that was like 20 something 25 hertz or something. Uh, so natural modes will be having very low frequency so there you do not need very uh, high frequency transducers. Now uh, where to place the transducers we would like to measure them at a pressure maxima. So if you have it at the end then you will always have a pressure maxima. and uh, 
therefore you will definitely measure the pressure whatever mode it is if, if it is a longitudinal mode. But if it is a axial but if it is a, if it is a tangential mode then you have to put them at different locations and then you have you can see you have to see the phase whether all transistors are going up all the pressure is going up together or, or one is going up and the one is coming up later then you have a mode like this. So, typically you can put in a laboratory you can put 10 transducers in the circumference but not in a real rocket. So, they put at 120 degree interval to see uh, that that is the best they can do and it will be preferable to put it if the oscillation is in the middle to put it there, but that may not be possible. So, they often mount it at the end and see what is happening. I understood that in a solid rocket the axial and radial modes get dampened due to the propellant itself. Is any, uh, uh, see any mode can be damped or driven by all these mechanisms, but ultimately what comes depends on whether you can excite uh, if there is a mode at a certain frequency whether the propellant can drive instability at that frequency and whether the driving is having uh, is putting in more energy than the acoustic energy taken out by the damping. So, there is no general thing like a propellant will damp radial modes or uh, axial modes are very easy to get because uh, these rockets are typically long and so it is quite easy there is a low, lower frequencies are easy to come. Uh, the next dimension is the circumference radius dimension is very small. So, naturally the frequency associated with the radial mode will be very large and uh, a propellant may not respond to that, but there is no blanket statement I would not want to make because every kind of thing has been seen somewhere or the other. Okay. Uh, so, whenever possible also uh, use redundant transducers because many times uh, when things go well everything goes well. You cannot put 100 transducers, but, uh, but you can put not just one because you may put one transducer and it may fail in the test. It is quite possible because you are talking about uh, I mean uh, high temperature and high pressure and all that. And so, full scale firings are too expensive not to take the extra insurance in the words of Bloomshell. <coughs> and uh, of course, many times uh, these transducers are mounted on extension tubes like uh, uh, because they cannot be mounted straight on. In that case, we have to be very careful to calibrate those mountings uh, because otherwise you may end up having mo uh, first of all the uh, um, this, this tube extension duct may actually change the frequency response of the transducer and you may actually measure modes which are belonging to that rather than the rocket. So, you may end up having things which really do not have anything to do with the actual thing. So, one has to be quite careful. So, uh, this is some general observations about uh, uh, instrumenting a rocket uh, for uh, having some idea about combustion stability if it occurs. Is there any questions? So, I will give you some um, general observation about solid rocket uh, motor instability before I move into explaining uh, triggering and nonlinear instabilities. Uh, these are uh, observations done over a long period of testing from the 50s. The first test started uh, this uh, rocket instability was uh, first reported during um, this uh, World War II. So, I do not know if it was there before that, uh, rockets were there for a long time before that, but uh, I do not know whether instability was reported. And the first study started in the 50s with uh, the massive thrust in uh, uh, massive thrust in this uh, rocket programs because of the Cold War and, and uh, the military race as well as the uh, space race and, and, and so on. So, then you try to push hard and then you cannot really push hard because you make the motor and it goes unstable and then you have to solve it. So, a lot of money was invested, but then once the motor works or they somehow manage to get the vehicle flying, then the funding for the instability will be cut because oh my problem is fixed, uh, why should this guys be fixed, uh, be given money. So, uh, let us uh, forget about it and, and then sometime later another motor will have instability and at the time they will go hunting for somebody who knows anything about it. And then some guy will be caught and um, brought here and given royal treatment, he will fix the problem and again uh, will be uh, thrown out without uh, anything. So, there has not been a tradition of continuously supporting this instability uh, uh, program. Uh, and our own primary reason is uh, this may be one reason, other thing may be that I mean, uh, my in my experience, the people who run the programs often have no idea what instability. So, if you do not appreciate this thing what is going on it may be just treated as a witchcraft or black art or something. So, then uh, chances of you supporting it are 
very less compared to um, some regular fluid mechanics study or something which looks like more like a professional science. So that is another thing, but anyway so quite a bit of it is this kind of general knowledge and quite a bit of it is uh, from the experience. So you cannot quite read papers and then say I am an expert because you have to have worked on it only then the, uh, you will be able to make the connection between the reading and this and many times you have to uh, make a call on uh, which is uh, which, what to do there. Uh, in there is one person in our department Chakravarti I think you know know him he is uh, very good at this witchcraft uh, I mean he has lot of experience with fixing uh, fixing things in solid rockets. In each uh, as I mentioned earlier uh, in each uh, device the specific driving mechanism is different but the general principles are same the outcoming features of the oscillation is the same. So uh, I mean I am very good at fixing things with gaseous systems but I do not have any experience with uh, uh, solid propellant. So, if I do not have the idea of saying put 1 percentage of this or 0.1 percentage of this and the thing magically vanishes that kind of thing I do not have whereas in a, in a um, gas turbine kind of combustor I have some black magic. So, it, it the driving mechanism is very specific to the device and, and you have to have experience with that thing to be able to get specific idea about the driving but the overall acoustics features will be very same for rocket or, or gas turbine or anything. So, uh, I think this is these are something you have to uh, um, keep track of and I think there is no substitute for experience. So, <coughs> the very fine and ultra fine which means typically less than 1 mic micron AP oxidizer particles usually give high pressure coupled response. So, you use very small AP and the reason for using small AP is to you have small AP particles you can increase the burn rate you must have studied in some propulsion classes. So, uh, but then propellants with fine AP are known to cause combustion instability uh, generally. So, if you have particles which are less than 5 micron size AP particles are quite a bit of course, your AP size is always a distribution right. So, but if you have a lot of, of uh, very small AP and that is the way you are going to increase the burn rate I think you have to be careful about instability uh, occurring. And in general if AP particle size is constant a higher burn burning rate will give the uh, low pressure coupled response that is may sound counterintuitive, but if you keep the AP particles as constant you can get higher burn rate by additives or catalyst. So, then uh, if that happens then uh, typically you see less uh, susceptibility to instabilities and very coarse AP again AP is ammonium perchlorate gives uh, instability and uh, the response function has a uh, that is this pro, uh, pressure coupled response function has a very strong dependence on p bar. So, which you must do elaborate uh, uh, testing and uh, propellants with a low pressure exponent will in general have lower response function. So, it is not that n is same as the response function, but generally it is seen that propellants with lower n this uh, exponent burn rate index uh, 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 will have a lower response function. In general if you increase the mean pressure and that is what everybody wants to do and why would you want to increase mean pressure because you get more thrust right uh, that is the thing. So, if you increase the mean pressure um, and if you keep other factors same uh, of course, the question is how do you increase the mean pressure in a rocket keeping other factors keeping the same propellant. No, you keep your same motor same propellant you cannot you are not you cannot burn more I mean it is it is a rocket I have given you a rocket how will you increase the pressure huh? yeah change the nozzle what do you do in the nozzle yeah. change the throw uh, but then when you have raising the mean pressure it reduces the stability margin things go unstable easily that is primarily because you are actually decreasing the nozzle uh, damping. Uh, because when you increase the mean pressure uh, the nozzle reflects more acoustic wave back and you are decreasing the nozzle damping and you are also reducing the flow turning losses that has been found. And um, So, a stable motor may tend to become unstable or if that does not happen a stable motor may become susceptible to nonlinear instabilities that is uh, pulsed instability that everything is fine suddenly it goes unstable because some disturbance happen and disturbance can happen 
because a, a small piece of propellant can break off and it will be carried out through a nozzle and momentarily it will block the nozzle. So, that will lead to a pressure spike and that spike can actually initiate the uh, uh, yeah, in, initiate the uh, oscillations and that is be triggering instability. So, uh, you can have triggering instability when the uh, if the motor did not have one and if you increase the mean pressure maybe it will come in. And so, if there is a instability uh, and then one possibility is to reduce the pressure one, one thing you can try, but then uh, nobody will like that because if you lower the pressure you are kind of compromising on the performance in some sense. Okay. So, to summarize and explain the statements if you increase the burn rate with catalysis propellant uh, combustion response will tend to go down, but if one increases burn rate with fine AP propellant response will actually tend to go up and uh, very fine or coarse AP also is not good from a uh, or very coarse both are not good from a combustion instability point of view and uh, for very fine AP crystals burning you know these crystals are surrounded to the fuel binder. So, the chemical reaction processes are kinetically controlled uh, that means the reaction is the uh, uh, slowest thing that that is there and they have a relatively high reaction order. So, the uh, reaction order is the pressure exponent in the chemical equilibrium equation and so very large AP so therefore, if you have a large pressure index naturally the burning is now susceptible to pressure. So, the burn rate will depend on the pressure fluctuations and that will um, give the uh, pressure coupled response. Now, if you have very large AP crystals combustion is kind of controlled by AP monopropellant flame AP itself will act as a monopropellant that means ammonium perchlorate has both the fuel and oxidizer in it and there will be brick crystals where this flame is there and this is also a high order reaction. So, the as the pressure fluctuates the reaction rate fluctuates thereby giving um, uh, high pressure coupled response. So, in between these extremes of particle size combustion processes are believed to be controlled more by diffusional effects which are not as sensitive to the pressure oscillations. So, that is why we do not want to go to very fine AP like you do not want if you have to be careful if you are going below 5 micron or if you are having a uh, very large AP uh, size coarse AP then also you have to worry about we will briefly look at a flow effects I mean we treat acoustic as if there is no flow, but there is a flow and one thing is when you design a motor the if there are sharp corners you will have vortex shedding and vortex shedding can actually uh, interact with the acoustic modes and you can drive uh, large oscillations even on its own vortices make sound, but when you are inside a cavity you can have resonances. So, avoid protruding inhibitions which is what the suggestion a rocket instability gap will give, but then you need inhibitors because otherwise uh, you cannot have segmental motors. So, always things are conflicting, but that is the way it is and avoid uh, radial slots you put radial slots to put give stress relief because this is a uh, under stress because you are casting it and so on, but again. that is then the propellant itself. So, if you are putting two things and then in between the if there is a little gap and there it will start burning and the the thing will expand. That is not an inhibitor then, <laughs> then it is not inhibiting it is also burning. So, this uh, this this is two things are pressing and this is burning. So, it will slot will open up. So, we do not want it to burn this way, but if you do not want to burn this way it would not burn that way also. So, I mean anything you do will you achieve something you mess up something else life as well as in combustion instability. So, uh, oscillations created by vortex shedding are not bang bang oscillations or they are not very loud as the oscillations uh, created by thermoacoustic instability typically the amplitude may be 1 percentage and, and, and so on, uh, but even that may be quite uh, may lead to quite a bit of thrust oscillations in uh, in a big motor. In fact, I mentioned that the thrust oscillation percentage may be about 10 times that of uh, burn rate I mean uh, that of the pressure oscillations. Try to see think about it maybe I ask you in the exam uh, how this happens uh, just see if you can think about it maybe it was there in one of the questions that I gave you also in that uh, question papers that is circulated. So, and uh, so if you have large size you have um, low frequencies so, low frequencies even small 
oscillations may create a lot of damage actually perhaps, because everything can respond to low frequency oscillations. So, that even though the amplitudes are very small. So, <coughs> the other thing is the, if you have large uh, area at the aft end, then what happens is it can increase the driving due to velocity coupling, because you know if you have large burning area, if you have a star grain or something towards the nozzle, then you have large area and there is large burning and then there the amount of propellant that is burning is quite a lot and there is uh, high velocity over it and you can actually have uh, velocity coupling effect. So, typically star grain is put uh, right at the, uh, the beginning and uh, if, you, uh, if you have uh, uh, a lot of burning area at the end, you can also end up decreasing the nozzle damping. Uh, because most of the aft case is exposed as the motor burnt. So, we try to put stars at the um, head and not near the nozzle. And if possible, there are some motors which are multiple nozzles, they are in general, they can give more damping, but then anything which will help you under some circumstance can boomerang under some other circumstance. So, if you mount them such that there is some flat area in between, then that would reflect the waves very well and then probably create more problems than the uh, increase in damping you got by mounting nozzles, so one has to be very careful. So, whatever you do, I think it is a good idea to measure the nozzle admittance, we know how to measure admittance right. So, so I mean you can mount the nozzles and measure the standing wave and then from that you can get the admittance. So, for star or wagon wheel or other similar slotted geometries, they are used in propellants. Do you know why a star is used? So, you want initially to have very rapid pressure right, so then you may want to have a star, star grain. So, uh, the traditional wisdom is that you have to have odd number of stars or odd number of wagon wheels, so that uh, you know the uh, tangential modes it, it would not support, because uh, your harmonics would not be there, because if you have odd number uh, that is not there. If you have 4 it may support second mode, if you have 5 it would not, but that is the traditional wisdom, but lately some studies have saying that this may not be true and the number of slots seem to make no difference. So, I do not know, uh, but the if you see the traditional wisdom and the geared uh, uh, rule of thumb, they say go for, go for odd uh, uh, number of grains, but uh, some people are saying that it does not matter. We uh, also spoke about uh, L star instability, do you remember what it was? Non acoustic instability, acoustic instability would mean what? Pressure is, there are modes, here the whole pressure goes up and down. So, if you have low volume uh, and then you have creating certain, you are generating certain amount of gases by propellant burning, some amount of going out through the nozzle and you may at some instant have more gas and then more may go out, um, more pressure and then as, as the uh, more gas is pumped out, the pressure may come down. So, this can oscillate and this particularly happens when your volume is less. Uh, so, L star would mean, uh, do you remember what is L star? A characteristic is volume divided by throat, throat area. So, when you have low L star that means low volume you have this instability. It is like the same thing I was telling about uh, if you spend money, if you do not have too much money uh, there will be a lot of fluctuations, but if you have deep pockets then you spend or do not spend it is not going to affect your uh, uh, balance a lot. So, it is something like that. Now, uh, on last thing I want to speak before I close off this course is particle effects. So, you have uh, particles that are added and primarily for damping the oscillations and uh, particle damping is uh, uh, of course, the most common particle is aluminum. So, aluminum burns to form alumina. There are also things like zirconium carbide which are added uh, as stability additives. They not only form this particle, but they also uh, influence the reactions uh, in the, uh, at the surface and so on. So, particle damping at a particle frequency is very dependent on the particle size. So, if you have high frequencies you need small particle size to damp them for lower frequencies you typically use bigger size particle. And uh, some of the additives like zirconium carbide you add, uh, they actually uh, modify the response function, they actually change the pressure index in this chemical reactions. So, uh, they actually uh, alter the response function in addition to having this two phase flow losses and of course, the, the way particle responds to oscillations is okay. particle they can be molten droplets also. Okay. So, it is not when you say particle 
we think uh, solid, but can be <coughs> droplets also. Now, it is not quite a linear response for a particle to give uh, a linear response to velocity for drag you have to have even under quasi steady conditions you have to have very low Reynolds number like Reynolds number has to be 0.01 to get Stokes drag, but here the Reynolds number will be uh, quite high. So, um, I mean quite high as in um, 10 or 20 or 30. So, it will be uh, it, will, it will not be Stokes drag, so it is a non linear function and uh, but this aluminum is uh, uh, burning to give alumina that is a uh, good thing and that is what uh, is the main tool the designer has to uh, bring the instability down. Uh, not only it brings instability down, but it also increases the specific impulse. Only thing is you have to use the correct size so that uh, and the size has depends on the frequencies that are excited. So, that you have to uh, uh, keep track of and uh, uh, of course, if you use very small propellant uh, very small aluminum size then uh, it may also affect the propellant uh, response the pressure coupled response. So, one has to be careful about that, uh, but uh, in general uh, aluminum uh, is used. So, that it burns to give alumina and then that is that can damp the oscillations and the amount of aluminum that is put is very high it is like 18 percentage in the western rockets. The Russians say that they can use as high as 23 percent, uh, but that kind of thing is not uh, done by us or the western countries uh, I am not sure why we are unable to I mean it seems a question of technology. Uh, then uh, there are some places where you cannot put aluminum we have to have smokeless propellants for military applications and there you are not allowed to put any of these additives. Uh, so, this adding additives to the uh, propellant and uh, affecting the uh, like zirconium carbide and affecting the uh, burn rate that is a delicate art uh, which uh, you have to uh, that is what another thing they try because sometimes you already have 18 percent aluminum and still you are having this uh, oscillation then that is probably what is left. And uh, you have one composition and uh, if you ask an expert which way to go he will say go both sides and whichever works take it I mean that is the way it is I mean unfortunately this currently. And uh, uh, so, you can affect the reactions, but it is not very um, easy to know because uh, uh, there is no experimental evidence to really understand the controlling mechanisms that cause some propellant to respond differently to uh, uh, pressure oscillations and some other propellants. But I think uh, uh, over the 50 years lot of improvement has happened in understanding combustion instability, but not really stopping it, but maybe in the next 50 years it may be uh, even better as to we can stop it. But so I will stop uh, the discussion on combustion instability today here. Thank you.